Hi guys, welcome back to Fairies Tutorials. Now, in today's episode, we'll be looking at a common food commodity that is on almost every breakfast menu. Can you guess what it is? Awesome. Today, we'll be looking at the production of eggs. Stay tuned. Section 4 Food Science and Technology. We're still looking at the production of common food commodities, and in today's session, we'll explore the production of eggs. Learning targets. By the end of this session, you should be able to state why eggs are considered as almost perfect food, outline the differences among free range, deep litter, and battery farming, identify parts of an egg, and also explain one method in which eggs are produced. Let's look at the description of eggs. Egg is one of the most valuable food in our diet. Its most important asset is that it has protein of high biological value, right? Containing all the essential amino acids needed for building and repairing body tissues. Now, based on the image on your right you can see other nutrients that are also found in an egg we have carbohydrates fats and also a variety of vitamins and minerals also awesome. now guys let us look at the parts of an egg so at this section here you can see the air cell there is also the albumin or the whites the germinal disc, the chalazi, the vitellin membrane, the inner membrane, the shell, and also the outer membrane. Now, let us look at these parts in details. Now, looking at the egg, from the outside we see the shell, which is a hard protective covering made of calcium carbonate. The shell is porous and this allows the transfer of gases through the cell. Immediately beneath the shell are two membranes, the outer and inner shell membranes, right? These membranes protect the contents of the egg from bacteria and prevent moisture from leaving the egg too quickly. Right, and based on this image that you're seeing, let us see if we can find the inner and the outer membranes, good? Now here is the outer membrane right here, good? And after the shell, you have the outer membrane and then you have the inner membrane. Also, let's continue. Because the body temperature of a hen is approximately 106 degrees Fahrenheit, eggs are very warm at the time they are laid. The temperature of the air is usually much lower than 106 degrees Fahrenheit and the egg cools to the temperature of its surroundings. Now, as cooling takes place, the contents of the egg contract so more than more than does the shell of the egg this creates a vacuum and air is drawn through the pores of the egg as a result an air cell forms at the large end of the egg right and as you can see this is what the air cell looks like. So as cooling takes place, remember as the, when the egg laid, it is very warm. So as cooling takes place, the contents, that means everything inside the egg, the yolk, the albumin, 
the membranes, everything contracts, right? So they move up closer together and hence, because the shell is so porous, then air passes through and that is why you have the air cell or the air sac in the egg. Now, while the embryo is growing, the shell membranes surrounds and contain the white or albumin of the egg. And in this picture, you can see you have both the thick albumin and also the thin albumin. And this simply means that this egg is super fresh. Now, in an egg that is not so fresh, you will only find the thin albumin. So whenever you break the egg and you see the thick albumin, then the white, then the thin albumin is supposed to show that this egg is fresh. Awesome. Also, in a fresh egg, we can see white cards attached to the yolk sac, right? These two cards are called caleza. They are, they are made of twisted strands of mucin fibers that are a special form of protein. The caleza holds the yolk in the center of the egg. So whenever you crack the egg and the yolk is still in place with the two white cards at the end, then you know that is also a fresh egg. Good. And these two white cards are called Kaleza. Awesome. Now guys, let's take a deeper look at the Kaleza. Now, at these two, based on what you're seeing there, that is what the Kaleza looks like. And if you're looking very carefully, you can see the other one located at this point up here. And the purpose of this is to hold the yolk into place. Now, in an egg that is not so fresh, you wouldn't see the egg in place, right? Also, now, the yolk is the source of food for the embryo and contains all the fat in the egg. The small white spot on the yolk is called the germinal disc, right? And as you can see right here, this is what the germinal disc would look like. And you see the images of the yolk are here. Also, now look at the production of eggs. Traditionally, eggs were produced by free range farming. This meant that hens were allowed to roam loose in the farmyard eating grains and other food from the ground. So free range, they weren't in any cage, they were allowed to roam on the farm and whatever food that is on the ground, they can consume it. Now, as the demand grew, large scale production in the form of battery farms were, are developed. Another form of large scale egg production involves keeping large numbers of hens together in huge heated shells, but not in cages. This is called deep litter, barn, or poultry farming. Now, let's take a look at the different pictures of what these type of farming looks like. So the first one here, we have the free range farming and hens are allowed to roam the yard and eat whatever nuts or whatever they found on the ground, right? Now in later stages, then there came battery farming, good, and also deep litter farming. Now checkpoint. State why eggs are considered as almost perfect food. Outline the differences among free range, deep litter, and battery farming. Identify four parts of the egg and outline one way in which eggs are produced. Now guys, as a bonus, take a look at the... Also, you've made it to the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and 
and share with persons who you know will find this video useful. Thank you for making it fair.